Today, we're going to be doing an Andy Warhol inspired pop art effect within Photoshop. For this project, we're going to be using a copyright free photo of Marilyn Monroe. So let's get started. All you have to do is drag the photo on top of the Photoshop icon. Within the application, once it opens up, you'll see your workspace. I am going to be going over many keyboard shortcuts today. It is the most efficient way to use Photoshop. A very basic keyboard shortcut is just command and the plus sign to zoom in and command and the minus sign to zoom out. To get started, we're going to go over to our layers. I know we are all beginners here, but layers are very, very important. And the first thing we're going to do is just unlock the layer by double clicking on the lock icon. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to cut out Marilyn Monroe from the background. There are many ways that you can do this within Photoshop, but today we're going to be using the pen tool. And if you're not familiar with the tools, a really great way to get to know them is just by hovering the mouse over the icons and then you can see visuals and explanations on what the tool does. You can also see the keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut for the pen tool is just P. Another thing to keep in mind is the tools with a white arrow in the bottom right hand corner have multiple options. If you click and hold, you can see all of the tools options. The pen tool has many options, uh, but today we're just gonna be using the basic pen tool. And we're gonna start by just clicking I'm making very straight lines and this does not look right. We can't just do straight lines around the figure. We have to produce more curves, especially around her sleeve and her shoulder. If you make a single mistake within Photoshop, you can always do Command Z. However, I made quite a few mistakes, so I'm going to go over here to the history window and I'm going to go back to the very beginning of when we first started using the pen tool. Now we're back and ready to make the correct path around Marilyn. You can make curves with the pen tool by clicking, holding, and dragging down the cursor. When it comes to your pen tool, this white circle right over here, that dictates the direction. You can remove the white circle by holding down the option key and then clicking on the black or blue square. Now that we know how to make straight lines and curves with the pen tool, we're just going to continue to create our path around Marilyn. If you see the white circle and if you want your path to go in that direction, that's fine. You don't have to hold down the option key and click on the black square. But when you're making these curves, it's important to have full control over where your path is gonna go. The outline we're doing around Marilyn Monroe or in Photoshop terms, the path, we don't need it to be perfect. We just want all of the hair to be included. So it's okay if it doesn't perfectly align with the hair outline because the effects we're going to be doing in a little while, they will give you all the details you need when it comes to that hair. Now I'm completely done. And when you're completely done creating your path around Marilyn, just click outside of the image, bring it all the way around, I want to zoom in so you can see it very clearly. There's a gap right there. And all you got to do to close it is just click on the final square and that will create your path. Once your path is created, then you can select it by right clicking. If you have a Mac to right click, all you got to do is do control and click. And you can really just click wherever. It doesn't matter. After you right click, you scroll down to make selection. Then we're going to do command C, command V to copy and paste and form a new layer. The layers are right over here. We have layer zero and layer one. The I icon right next to the layer, that shows which layer is visible. If an I is not shown, your layer is not visible. The order of your layers are very, very important. You want to think of your layers like building blocks. We're only really going to have layer one be visible. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to image. I know the toolbar is cut off, but if you go all the way up to the top, you can see image. 
and then you just scroll down to adjustments and finally you want to go to threshold and you're just going to click after that we're going to create a copy of layer one by making sure it's highlighted and doing command j it's quicker than doing copy and paste it's the best way to copy your layers just doing command j and we're going to rename layer one to be original and then we're going to rename the copy to be skin and you can change the label of your layer just by double clicking on the text we will create the skin value in two different ways the first will apply a gradient and the second will utilize a solid color fill you can choose which method you like the most when it comes to your skin value however we will use the same solid color fill method for applying both our lips and our hair values to begin the gradient method we are going to create a new layer using the new layer icon then we will click g which is the keyboard shortcut for gradient gradients usually use two color values and you can choose from the default values here or you can choose your own colors down here but gradients can also be a single color after you've chosen your colors you can create your gradient in whichever direction you'd like after you've created your gradient right click on your gradient layer scroll down and select clipping mask this adheres your gradient to your previous layer then we are going to change the blending mode for the layer here you can see all the different effects and choose your favorite one. Now that we finished the gradient, we are going to do the solid color fill. First, make sure that your gradient layer is invisible. Then you need to make sure that your skin layer is selected. And then you need to hold down the option key and go down to the adjustment layer icon and select solid color. When the window pops up, make sure that use previous layer to create clippy mask is checked off. It's very important that this is checked off. If it's not, it will cover the entire layer. Now, even after you do this, you can still change the color if you don't like that color. And we have to change the blending mode once again. I'm going to change mine to multiply. And the beauty of Photoshop is you can always go back and revise things. So if you change your mind about the color, you can just double click on the solid color fill icon and change the color that way. Once you're done with these two options, you're going to click on the gradient layer, hold the shift key, and then click on the skin, and that will select multiple layers at once. And then you're gonna do Command G to group the layers together. Then double click and rename the group layers to be labeled skin. It's always a good idea to keep your layers well organized and labeled so that you can go back and make revisions if necessary. Organized layers make completing projects within Photoshop much more manageable. So after you've done the skin and we're happy with that, we are going to make the skin invisible and we are only going to make the original layer visible. And now we're going to work on the lips. And just like we did earlier with selecting out Marilyn's entire figure from the background, we are going to be using a lasso tool to select her lips. As I mentioned earlier, if your tool has a small arrow in the bottom right hand corner, that means there's multiple options. The first lasso tool, it's a little bit more organic. You have full control over the movement. And I'm just going to do Command D to deselect that. The second lasso tool is a little bit more rigid. It creates straight lines. It's great for selecting out shapes as well, and we're going to do Command D to deselect that. We are actually going to use the final lasso tool, which is the magnetic lasso tool. When you're using the magnetic lasso tool, all you got to do is go along the outside very slowly and it adheres to the shape. If you're selecting bold defined shapes, then this is a great lasso tool to use. Uh, however, it is more difficult to go around corners. So instead, I'm going to click when I get to the corner of her mouth. And I'm also going to click when I get to the middle of her mouth. 
When you do the final click, if you see a circle below your cursor, that means that your shape is finalized, there weren't any gaps, and you're good to go. Now you can either do Command C, Command V to copy and paste, or you can do Command J, and that creates a new layer. I'm going to make my original layer invisible. For this exercise, you should never, ever, ever edit this original layer. We're just going to be copying things from the original layer, but it's very important that you leave that layer alone. You do not want to make any alterations or changes to your original layer. After you've copied and pasted your lip selection, we're just going to rename it to be lips. Then you're going to make sure the correct layer is selected. You're going to hold down Option, go down here to Adjustments, then click Solid Color once again. I'm going to save myself a little bit of time and I'm just going to click Lighten when it comes to the mode. Now I'm going to select both layers by clicking my Color Fill 2, holding down Shift, and then clicking on Lips. Now I'm going to make a group by doing Command G and I'm going to rename it to be Lips. Remember, your layers are like a stack of building blocks. The order of your layers are very important. As you can see, my lips group is placed underneath my skin group, so you can't see my lips. But I can make my lips visible again if I click and drag the group to be above the skin group. Now we're going to make our lips and our skin groups invisible once again. And then we're going to go right down to original and make sure that is the only layer that is visible. And this time, we're going to be using that first lasso tool, the one that's a little bit more organic in movement. And now we're going to click, drag, and draw it all the way around our hair. For this lasso tool, all you got to do is click and drag it all around your hair. If you make a mistake, just do Command D and start all over. When it comes to selecting out our hair, it doesn't need to be perfect. As long as all the white parts of the hair are selected, we're good. So you can be a little bit more messy and free when it comes to this selection. To copy, we're just going to do Command J. Now we're going to make the original layer invisible once again. Because remember, we're not doing any alterations to our original layer. And then we're going to double click and rename this layer. Now we are going to do the same color fill effect. First, make sure only your hair layer is selected. Then hold your option key and go down to the adjustment layer. And then select solid color. That will bring you to this window and make sure that use previous layer to create clipping mask is selected. And now we're able to change the color. Then we need to change the blending mode. So as you can see, the yellow kind of goes outside the lines a little bit. So now we got to clean that up. And we're going to go over probably one of the most important skills within Photoshop. And that is using a mask. It's easy to use an eraser tool within Photoshop. But once you erase something, you lose it forever. So instead, we will use a mask to temporarily hide some of the hair layer without losing that information forever. When you go to the Color Fill 3 layer, or whatever your layer is called, you can see an icon that represents the function of the layer, and this layer is enabling a solid color fill. Then to the right, you can see a white rectangle. This white rectangle is a mask. Masks work within black and white values. When the mask is white, everything is visible, and when it's black, everything is invisible. You can invert your mask and turn it black by doing Command-I. To use a mask, we will click on the hair layer in order to select it, and then click on the mask icon. For the mask, we will use the brush tool, and the keyboard shortcut for that is B. Then, make sure you've clicked on the layer mask thumbnail, and that you're using the color black. When it comes to your colors, the front square is the foreground color, and the back square is the background color. For this purpose, you need the black to be your foreground color. 
You can switch the colors by using this icon or clicking X on your keyboard. If you accidentally select colors outside of black or white, just click D and that will restore the default colors. So within the mask, after you've selected black as your foreground color, you can take your brush tool and just swipe it over the area and that's it. The information is invisible but not gone forever. If you accidentally swipe your brush over here, you can either do Command Z, go to the history, or you can select the white value by clicking X on your keyboard and brushing it over the area. The beauty of using the brush tool is you have full control over the size, softness and hardness, and you can even choose different types of brushes to use. Another thing you can do that we will not do in this project is change the opacity. So when you're using the brush tool you have full control and it can create some really cool projects within Photoshop. And last but not least, we are going to create a background by clicking this new layer icon and dragging it below the skin. Remember, layers are like building blocks. The background needs to be in the background. So in order for it to be in the background, it has to be below the skin. We're going to double click and we're going to label this background. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to double click on the background. Remember, the background is the one behind, the foreground is in front. For this, I'm just going to pick a color that I think will look nice in the background. Then we're going to do Command Delete, and that is it. Our background is done. Remember, if I drag my background up here, you can't see anything. Layers are like building blocks. Now we need to change the image size in order to make four pop art renditions of Marilyn Monroe. We're going to do Command Option C, and for the values, we will input 2,000 pixels for the width and 2,826 pixels for the height. And now we're ready to do all four renditions of our Marilyn Monroe photo. So first, we are going to make sure all of our layers are selected. So we're going to click Background, we're going to hold the Shift key, and then we're going to click hair and to create a group we're going to click uh, command G on our keyboard and then we're going to label this number one because this will be the first version we're going to create four for this project just going to drag this down here to the corner and we are going to copy the number one group three times so we will have four groups total we are going to rename the groups number one number two number three and number four and we're just going to drag these into position. After we have all of our groups labeled and ready within our layout, we are actually going to clean up the layout and make sure everything is lined up properly. Within Photoshop, you can use something called guides, which are these neon lines. All you got to do is drag it down from the ruler at the top or drag it over from the ruler over here on the left hand side. Then after you have your guides all made up, just click on the group you want to move and then you can just use the arrows on your keypad to move them to align perfectly with your guides. After you're done with the guides, if they're distracting, you don't have to keep them. You can go up here to view scroll down to clear guides or if you like the guides but you're worried that they're going to move in the future you can even lock guides after we have everything lined up correctly we're going to be ready to change some of the colors the first one we are going to be altering is number two we're going to start with the background all you have to do is create a new layer Remember the new layer icon is right down here. Make sure it's on top of the background. Then you're gonna pick a new color for this new background. I like this green. Whenever I'm ready with my color, I'm gonna do Command Delete. And as you can see, it covers my entire image. Ah, you, you don't wanna do that. Um, so we're gonna have to alter this a bit. There are a couple different ways you can do this. One way is you can do Command-T and you can alter the size that way. 
my Photoshop doesn't allow me full control over the dimensions. If I want to have full control over the dimensions, I need to hold down the shift key. And that allows me to make it as wide or as long as I'd like. Now doing Command T, which is the shortcut for transform, that is one way of doing it. But a more efficient way of doing this is just to go to the layer, right click, and scroll down to create clipping mask. And that will adhere to the correct size of your background. Now we're gonna move on to the skin. All you have to do is double click right here on the color fill layer and you can just change your color. Super easy. As long as you followed all the steps correctly for the first version, version number two, version number three, and version number four will be a breeze. Then we're gonna change the lip color, same thing, just double click, and you can change it to whichever color you'd like. Now we're gonna move on to the hair. I know she had blonde hair, but I wanna have fun with the colors choose something a little bit different. Make sure when you're choosing your colors that they do contrast each other. The first purple I chose for the hair did not contrast with the skin as well as I'd like, so that's why I made my hair color a little bit darker. So just make sure that you're choosing your colors wisely and making sure that the colors look good together. Um, when you're doing different color schemes, you can work with cool colors, you can work with warm colors, you can work with complementary colors. There's so many different types of colors you can use. Just be sure to go back to your knowledge on color theory when informing your choices. Once you're ready to save, we are going to save as. We're going to do the keyboard shortcut for that, which is Command Shift S. And this is saving the Photoshop file. After you've saved the Photoshop file, we are going to save it once again in an image file by doing Command Option Shift S. When it comes to image files, JPEG is the highest quality image format within Photoshop. Next comes PNGs. PNGs allow you to have a transparent background. If you can see the checkered pattern, that means that if you save this within the PNG format, it will be transparent. If you save it within the JPEG format, this checkered background will turn to a white background. For this purpose and for future projects, we're going to be saving our work within the JPEG format. And that's it for this pop art project using a copyright free photo of Marilyn Monroe. Feel free to do this project with a photo of yourself. But just keep in mind that this pop art effect is much easier to pull off on a high quality photo taken in the right lighting. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about Photoshop.